So I've created a collection of sewing patterns which all serve as a base, a selection of different tops and skirts that can be put together to create the dress of your dreams. The whole collection has a comfortable and flattering silhouette that is fitted on the bust, cinched at the waist and flowy on the hips with a variety of different necklines, straps and skirt lengths that you can choose from. The patterns are designed to be as simple and easy to make as possible so it's perfect for beginner sewers and to keep it super beginner friendly these patterns are made to be used with stretch fabric so that we don't need to add any zips or buttons. So to make your own custom dress simply pick the top and skirt you want and attach them together at the waist using tape. They'll fit together perfectly like so. Of course, you can also use each piece individually to make cute tops and skirts as well. In this tutorial, I will be showing you specifically how to make the number two base, but the steps are the same no matter which base or base combination you're using. And I'll be showing you throughout the tutorial how all the steps are essentially the same. All of the patterns are available in UK size 4 to 20 and they come in A4 and US letter size printing format for easy at home printing and assembling. If you are printing at home, simply download the file and open the paper format that you need using Adobe Acrobat Reader. All of the sizes are included in one file, so to print your size, open the layers tab at the right hand side and deselect all of the sizes that you don't need, so you only have your size and the two text layers visible. Then get ready to print the file. Depending on your size, some of the pages might be blank because you deselected the larger sizes. For example, here the last two pages are blank, so you can omit them from printing to save paper. Make sure you're printing at 100% scale as well. You can print just the first page first and compare the scale at the top of the page to your tape measure or ruler to check that the scale is indeed correct. At the top of each page is a letter and number to help you lay the pages in the correct order. The order is alphanumerical, so the rows are in alphabetical order and the columns are in numerical order like this. There's a bit of excess space at the edges of the pages, so I like to fold over that edge using these small triangles at the corners and sides of the page to guide me. The triangles are there to help you align the pages accurately, so the triangles should line up to make squares like this. And then you can use tape to attach all of the pages together. Make sure to tape up all the gaps in the pattern pieces and then cut out the patterns along the bold lines. This will give you a 1.5 cm seam allowance all around the pattern. With your chosen stretch fabric, lay it out with the right side of the fabric facing up and fold it over. Place the pattern on the fold and use clips or weights to hold it in place. And cut around the pattern piece trying to be as precise as possible. For the tops there is a bust dart so use fabric chalk to mark the dart lines on the fabric on both sides. Do the same for the back panel. So now you should have two pieces, the front and the back panel. The first thing we want to sew are the bust starts on the front panel. So with the right side of the fabric facing down, fold this triangle in half so that the two lines you've drawn line up together. And we want to sew along this line. We want to use a straight stitch for this to keep the line thin and precise so that the dart doesn't look bulky or messy. So by sewing this dart, you're manipulating the flat fabric into a three-dimensional shape. Here you can see it's created volume in the chest area compared to the flat side without the dart sewn in. Do the same on the other side. Now we just need to attach the front and the back panels together. So with the right sides facing together, place the back panel and the front panel on top of each other and sew along the two sides with a 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. We want to use a zigzag stitch here since we're using a stretch fabric. And I personally love to use this hem stitch, which is number 25 on my sewing machine because I found it to be the strongest and stretchiest stitch. I use the guide on my sewing machine so I can easily keep my sewing line 1.5cm from the edge. 
Then finish the raw edges either by using a serger or simulating a serger with a hem stitch on your sewing machine and trimming. The next step is to try the garment on and make any adjustments you might need and use pins to get the exact right strap length for you. Then sew the straps together with the right sides facing each other, trim off the excess and finish that raw edge. Then your garment is almost done, all that's left now is to hem all of the raw edges. There's a variety of ways to hem stretch fabric, each with different levels of difficulty and giving a different look. So I have a separate video explaining in depth all the methods I have used to hem my garments. Pick one method depending on your skill level and desired look and you are finished. This video serves as a simple and comprehensive guide for beginners on how to make my dresses and I have two other videos to accompany this one. A video on how to tailor and alter the pattern to fit you perfectly and my previously mentioned hemming techniques video. My hope is that all three of these videos will help you to develop the skill to make the perfect dresses for you. Clothing that is tailored to your exact style and body as well as being sustainably and ethically made. As of right now, this collection consists of four different tops and two skirts, but I intend to keep expanding it by adding more styles of tops, skirts and even sleeves that will all fit and work together so you have infinite combinations to make your own custom dress. And I will be taking suggestions, so if you have any ideas for extra bases, then please leave them in the comments. If you create anything using my videos or patterns, then please tag me and use the hashtag MyAdore. I can't wait to see all of your creations.